This is the sagittal section of the face showing different muscles along with the neurovasculature present on the face. Starting from the midline, we have muscle called procerus. Right. Then near the forehead, we have the occipital frontalis muscle and here it is its frontal belly is shown. This is the area of eye, so it is this circular muscle is known as orbicularis oculi, its palpebral part. Then we have the nasalis. Below the nose we have the oral cavity, so the circular muscle enclosing or surrounding the oral uh, mouth or the lips is known as orbicularis oris. Near the midline, below the lower lip, we have the mentalis, this one. Next to it, we have the depressor, levi inferioris, then depressor, anguli oris, depressing the angle of the mouth. Here, under these neurovasculature, these fibers, these are of platysma muscle. These are the two muscles, zygomaticus minor and major. And here, under this blue vein, this muscle is known as levator levi superioris, this one. And here we have the rhizoreus and above it we have the buccinator. Further moving on laterally over the face, this muscle that covers the outer surface or the lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible, this one, is known as masseter. And above it, near the auricle of the eye, uh, ear, lies the pyrotid gland along with its pyrotid duct. This muscle over the temple is known as temporalis muscle. On the neck, starting from the midline, we have the strap muscles, sterno, hyoid and sterno thyroid muscles. This muscle on the lateral side of the neck is an important landmark for this region and is known as sternocleidomastoid. Most posteriorly, the superficial muscle in the back is known as trapezius. So this hole is the trapezius muscle. Next to it, we have the semispinalis capitis then further next here this one we have the splenius capitis this straight muscle is the levator scapuli and next to it lie the three scalini the nerves emerging along the anterior and the posterior border of the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid this muscle nerve that is seen to be emerging from the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid going towards the auricle is known as great auricular nerve and the next one that is going towards the occipital region of the scalp is known as lesser occipital nerve this nerve that is seen to be emerging from the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid Moving anteriorly in transverse plane is known as transverse cervical nerve. The, these three nerves going towards the clavicle down are known as the three supraclavicular nerves, lateral, intermediate and medial. This blue structure is the internal jugular vein. Above it is seen to be formed by the posterior division of the retromandibular vein and the posterior auricular vein. 
whereas this vein that is running over the anterior surface of the face is known as facial vein facial vein joins the anterior division of the uh, retromandibular vein to finally uh, drain into the internal jugular vein this artery that is seen to be ascending from the base of the mandible along the submandibular gland is the facial artery moving up till the medial angle of the eye this here you can see is the zygomatic arch and this is the zygomatic bone these nerves emerging from the different borders and surfaces of the protruding gland are the branches the five terminal branches of the facial nerve along the parotid duct lie the buccal nerves and then along the base of the mandible lies the marginal mandibular nerve and then here we have the zygomatic and temporal nerves this is the auriculotemporal nerve along with the uh, uh, superficial temporal artery and superficial temporal vein superficial uh, temporal uh, vein and this here you can see the superficial temporal vein along with the superficial temporal artery and then we have the auriculotemporal nerve all of these three neurovasculature associated with the upper part of the auricle in the temporal region